It's so nice to be here. I don't know about inspiring, but I am inspired by everybody in this room today. You know, um, Kevin and Nicole made me cry. And uh, I mean, I'm, I'm just so taken aback by this organization. Having met Shirley on the, on the phone, actually, several weeks ago, it, she immediately sort of spoke to me and spoke to my soul. And before I, I get to, to talking to our graduates and these wonderful kids here today, I just want to say this donation that, that you're raising money for. I went to the University of Miami. I'm from the Bronx. I was born and raised. Hey, we have Bronx people in the room. Born and raised in the Bronx. And when I went to you, and my mom was a single mom, I had no money. And I mean, no, no, no money. And I took out loans, and I wish somebody had helped me with the college application process because I didn't know what I was doing, and I got in way over my head, and I went to a school that um, was very expensive. And I didn't have enough money, literally, to eat three meals a day. So I lost a lot of weight because I didn't want to burden my mother. And I remember I would have really, really, really appreciated a program like this. So I don't want to get choked up, but this is a wonderful thing that you guys are doing here today. We're not going to let you kids starve when you go away to school, though. So don't worry about that. <laughs> well, I'm so happy. I'm so happy and proud to be here with you today for so many reasons. The biggest reason I want to talk to the kids here today, I am you. I've stood where some of you are. I was the first person in my family as well to get a degree. A Hispanic kid going into an environment where most people were not Hispanic at first, and many were surprised that I could actually speak, read, and write coherently. <laughs> I spent a lot of my life with people having low expectations of me because I'm a Hispanic woman. That's the reality. The obstacles that people put in your way, they're important, those obstacles. They can make us weaker, and we can lie down and lose. Or they can make us stronger, and we can use them to rise up and win. I choose the latter. It's how we look at our obstacles. It's how we come up with solutions or come up with excuses. It determines where you end up. The choices that we make when we are up against a wall, that determines who we become. Because of who we are, there's a lot of inequality. There's racism. There's attempts to suppress us. It's part of life. And some of us learn to accept it, but I didn't. See, I was raised by a very, very strong woman. I was actually conditioned to almost believe that those boundaries didn't even really exist. That that world's over there, but I could get there. The stereotypes and obstacles that are before us all the time, that they're not really there. They don't really overwhelm you. They don't stop you. You just push through. They don't exist. But the truth is they do. We have to deal with inequality every day. Racial, ethnic, gender, income inequality. If there's a totem pole, very often, some people want to put Latinos at the bottom. We're constantly fighting, pushing, making a path in a place where some people don't want you to be. Some people don't expect you to be. Some people won't make room for you to be. There's a lot that isn't fair. But I learned early on, and I want the young people in this room to know, take those obstacles, those boundaries, those roadblocks that people put in your way, embrace it. Because when you break through, and you already are, you will be so much better and stronger than the person who had everything handed to them. So remember that. I was a Puerto Rican girl from the Bronx, as I said, raised by a single mother living in poverty, real poverty. Life would be harder for me than for a lot of people. But I was taught to push forward. When a friend of the family, a smart woman with a PhD, asked me when I was 10 years old what I wanted to be when I grew up, I told her a television news reporter. And she laughed. She said, oh, you want to be a star? But I pushed forward. When middle and high school teachers suggested that I pursue something more realistic, because my chances of success in this field were slim to none, I pushed forward. When a college professor told me I would never work in this business with my New York Latina accent, which, by the way, I didn't ever hear. <laughs> I don't know what she was talking about. I didn't listen to her either. And I learned to work the Latina accent. When a managing editor interviewing me for a job told me after he was impressed, I guess, he said, I didn't think when you walked in that you actually had a brain in that head. 
It's okay. I got the job. <laughs> After I'd been anchoring on NBC for a few years, and I've been there for almost 18 now, but after I'd been anchoring there for a few years, people would compliment me, compliment my mom after seeing me on TV and say, wow, I saw your daughter. She speaks so well. She's so articulate. <laughs> I had to explain to my mother, mom, that's not a compliment, okay? <laughs> I'm supposed to speak well. See, I never used things that stood in my way as an excuse or a crutch. I could have said, they don't like me because I'm Hispanic. They didn't hire me because I'm a Latina. Maybe that was true here and there. But I don't have to sit there and take it. We need to understand, some people are always going to feel a certain way about us. There's nothing we can do. We can use that as ammunition to work harder and do better. I could get offended at the things that people say. And I have, and I've let them know. <laughs> But I understand where that ignorance comes from. I go to work every day and I try to do the best job I can. I try to do that everywhere I go. I try to represent my community the best way I can because the responsibility is not just with me. It's a whole community that I feel responsible for. So when the young people in this room, when it's your turn to come take over our jobs, we hope things are easier for you. That I feel is my responsibility to you. See, I'm here. I set out to do something a long time ago. I wanted this job that I have since I was eight years old. I didn't know anybody on TV, not many college-educated people on Stratford Avenue in the Westchester section of the Bronx, where I came from. I didn't know anybody who was a journalist, but I didn't take no for an answer. I never took no for an answer. Whatever there was, was there, I found a way around it. I'm not going to lie, it's a little bit scary. Some of you going into environments that are new and different, you may not see a lot of people who look like us, who sound like us, but you have to remember, look around, remind yourself, you didn't get here by accident. It wasn't a favor somebody did for you. You earned it. You deserve to be here. Always remember that. Every step, every bit of progress you make, you take our whole community with you. You elevate all of us with your success. You help all of us get more respect. Every one of you and each of your accomplishments is a big deal. Walk proud and know that. The feeling that you have today, that we all have for you today, remember it. That pride, that tremendous sense of accomplishment. When you get to college, every class you go to, every assignment, you complete every exam you take, it's gonna put you one step closer to achieving another goal, probably one of the most important milestones in your life. So set those standards high. Don't just pass that class, get an A. You already know that. You're going to amazing schools. I'm looking at the list of schools and I'm beyond impressed. Dress, speak like you respect yourself, right? Always, others will respect you too. One of the gifts that you have, that those of us in this room who've had when we have to struggle, is because we're where we're from, you're tougher, you're stronger, you're more resilient than most of the kids who just graduated high school this year, most of the kids you get to college with. You're, you're stronger than most of them. You'll see when you get there. I look around and I see the people who are here at the tables with our young students, mothers, fathers, family members. They're the people who love you, who, 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 who support you, they believe in you. If everybody else lets you down, they're the ones who are going to be there for you. Y los padres, I'm not as articulate in Spanish as Shirley, but ustedes hicieron eso también. Sus hijos están aquí por el apoyo y el ánimo de ustedes, y ustedes merecen un aplauso también. You deserve applause to the parents. And the mentors, the people who are in this room, the supporters, Shirley, the people who created this amazing organization, I'm so grateful to you personally. You know how much our community needs this. When Shirley called me on the phone, I could feel the warm enthusiasm. You know, you can see a smile when you hear it, right? She smiles through the phone. And there are very few people who are as excited about something as you are, and it spoke to me, I appreciated it. You've taken up a torch to bring this generation up so we can advance as a powerful force. You're changing lives, you're a blessing, everybody in this room. And to the students, one more thing, I've walked in your shoes, I've walked in your shoes. They were, my shoes were very cheap. 
<laughs> I've been where you are. I had people who believed in you, just like you have all of the people in this room who believe in you. The reason I get to do what I do today, which was always my dream job, is because I set those standards so high. Those goals, those unattainable goals, or so people thought, I set them high. I was scared, I was uncomfortable, I cried. I wanted to go home when I got to school. I stuck with it, you'll stick with it. You're in a much better position than I was. You have an entire community of people supporting you. And I know that you're gonna represent your family, you're gonna represent us, your culture, your community, and you're gonna do it in the best way possible. And I can't wait to see in four years what you're all up to. So congratulations and thank you all for having me here today.